During the 1980s and 90s, animatronics were the big thing in entertainment, captivating audiences at amusement parks and family restaurants. These mechanical marvels brought beloved characters to life, creating a magical experience for visitors. Popular places like Showbiz Pizza and Chuck E. Cheese had animatronic bands like the Rocket Fire Explosion and the Munch's Make Believe Band. But as time passed, animatronics lost their appeal, their popularity faded, and many of these once-loved robots were left behind, sitting on silent stages to rot. These forgotten animatronics, once the stars of the show, face an uncertain future, overshadowed by nostalgia. So in today's video, we will be talking about abandoned animatronics, and where are they now? Welcome back to another video. This is like an early Halloween special because Tub and I did a little collab. And on Halloween, I will also be dropping another video for you guys, so stay tuned for that. After this video, go watch the animatronic documentary on the Tuv channel. And before this video starts, don't forget to check me out on Twitter and Instagram. And go buy from EarlDoesn'tExist.com using my link in the description below because the Fazbear Earl plush has dropped on the site. So go get one today. The link is down in the description below. But other than that, let's get straight into this video. Norman. You may recognize this animatronic if you're familiar with the hit rock band Interpol. In 2004, Interpol made a music video called Evil, which uses this animatronic named Norman. The music video starts off with a car crash, where you see Norman surviving it. The whole song is in Norman's perspective, and he's the one singing the song, and is the main focus of the music video. Later in the music video, Norman is put in the back of an ambulance, where he is taken to the hospital. In the hospital, he starts to dance. The dancing is kind of creepy, however, this animatronic's facial movements are amazing, especially for 2004. As his lips lip sync the lyrics accurately, Norman became a fan favorite, and his music video is the most viewed video on the Interpol YouTube channel. So, where is the Norman animatronic today? What's going on? I'm over here, guys. I didn't go anywhere. Don't listen to the guy with the messed up hairline. Instead of him having to narrate my story, why don't I narrate it instead? What Aaron just stated, I was made to be in the evil Interpol music video back in 2004. After that, I was pretty much lost, rotting somewhere until 2014, where I was being sold at an auction on iCollector.com. The listing was titled, The Animatronic Creepy Ghoul Puppet from Music Video, meaning that I have finally been found after 10 years in those 10 years, I was just locked away, deteriorating. My skin was cracking, and you can see the metal from my eyes exposed. And my leg fell off. For some reason, nobody wanted me, because no one even bidded. Which means I could have been sold for a penny back in 2014. After that, I was forgotten once more. Luckily, a man, a great man, by the name of John Kolbeck. Yep. There he is, right there, right there. And that's him. That's him. <clears throat> anyway, uh, luckily a man by the name of John Kolek saw the harsh condition I was in, so he hunted me down online and saw that a prop collector was selling me on Facebook sometime before the winter of 2019. I was first shown off to the family during that winter of 2019, and I was shown to Teresa, John's wife, first, since she was a huge Interpol fan. <laughs> you don't know what this is. This is Norman. He is the puppet from Interpol's music video, Evil, my favorite band in the world. And this is from my lovely fiance. It's Norman. Oh, Merry Christmas. And I was in rough shape, so John and his fans raised money on a GoFundMe called Norman Back to Normal. $3,000 was raised for my restoration process, which I was in good hands of Luna's Puppets, since they were the company that restored me. On March 24th, 2022, I was returned back home, fully restored. I went from looking like this, to now this. I currently run a show where I react to weird retro stuff and sometimes popular things on the internet. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. This kid sounds like the nerdy kid from The Simpsons. Wow, Earth, Wind, and Fire! 
but we have our standards. If you don't have a rat, you can't. You don't have a rat. Us. You can't be in this game. Shouldn't you be in school? F you and f the establishment and f you people who are trying to make me part of the unestablished establishment. All right, I'll pick you up tomorrow at 11 o'clock. I'll take you to the zoo and we'll go to the ball game. <laughs> I can get money for nothing. That's it. He's like, F this and F that, and he's like, all right, I'll take you to the zoo. If you want to go see more from me, go check out my channel, Odd Stories YT, <laughs> and, and uh, like the video you're currently watching. Thanks, Morbid for Fun, for having me on. And, uh, hey, um, is, are we done? Is that, uh. That was a bit strange, but on to the next one. Showbiz Rocket Fire Explosion. Showbiz Pizza was a chain of family entertainment centers and restaurants that was popular in the United States during the 1980s and early 1990s. It was known for its unique combination of arcade games, animatronic stage shows, and pizza. The most famous animatronic characters at Showbiz Pizza were the Rock of Fire Explosion, a band of animatronic animals that would perform musical shows for the guests. In 1985, Showbiz Pizza merged with Chuck E. Cheese and most locations were eventually turned into a Chuck E. Cheese back in 1991. Chuck E. Cheese's continued the tradition of combining arcade games, food, and animatronic shows for family entertainment. So where are the Rocket Fire Explosion today? Well, they're actually at your local Chuck E. Cheese. Kinda not really though. When Showbiz merged with Chuck E. Cheese, all Showbiz locations became a Chuck E. Cheese. So they went under a process called Concept Unification, where they stripped every Rock of Fire character and just gave them a Chuck E. Cheese costume. Duke LaRue became Pasquale, Mitzi Mozzarella became Helen Henny, Fats became the Homie Munch, Beach Bear became Jasper, and Rolf the Wolf became the one and only Chuck E. Cheese. And what happened to Billy Bob? Bro just died. Yeah, they decided to retire him and only use them for spare parts. However, some collectors got their hands on them, including Damon from Smitty Super Service Station, who does own a Billy Bob and the rest of the members from the Rock of Fire explosion. So I went to Mississippi with Tuv to visit Smitty Super Service Station to get a live performance of the Rock of Fire explosion. And seeing them perform in 2023 is pretty rare. We are here with the Rock of Fire Explosion. We are with Damon, the owner of Smitty Super Service Station. And of course, we're here with the one and only Tug. What up? I'm a small channel, guys. Yeah, I'm using him to, you know, for quick yeah. play. Hopefully I can get to 1K with this video. Yeah. Put your name in my title. Yeah. <laughs> so basically my video, I'm talking about a band animatronics and Rock of Fire Explosion. Of course, it's no longer around. So basically the question I'm gonna ask is like, where did you get it? Um, how many bands were there? Like how many bands like currently, you know, uh, saved? Because I, I believe like some of them were like destroyed, right? Uh, a lot of them were destroyed and are still actively destroyed because of the ones that are currently Chuck E. Cheese characters, the yeah. three sages are still these animatronics underneath and they're still actively yeah. being destroyed. And that reminds me for the other question, like I wanna, because with the concept unification, a lot of these animatronics became the Chuck E. Cheese one. So like we could go with each one, like tell like what character they eventually became. So back to the original question, yeah. there were 280 produced. 280 bands? Of, of these robots, so two each sets. Character. Right, so yeah. each one of the characters was made 280 times. They made them from 81 to 83. And then they were in showbiz pizza places till 1991. There were just a little over 200 showbizes that opened. The yeah. company, Creative Engineering, and Aaron Fector kept those last 80 shows, and that's what they had sold for the last 30 years to all these other companies that wanted to have the show, too. Yeah. So, at last count, Creative had one full show left in their archives. Yeah. And then there is a business in West Virginia called Billy Bob's Wonderland that still has a show that's active. And then there are several other fans, like myself, who have them in their garages, their basements, and their barns. So there's only a handful of these left. A handful. Yeah, out of the original 280. So it's so sad. Is it's it like sad how you... There's like under maybe like 100 bands oh, left? Oh, way under 100. Like, like less than less than 25. Less than 25. Wow, that's a little bit. From, from 280 down to 280 to... Dang. Yeah. Dang. And then when Chuck E. Cheese gets rid of the last of those, you'll be able to count what's left on your hands and your toes. It'll be less yeah, than 20. 
right. But anyway, back to concept unification. So let's start, uh, let's start over there. Let's start over here. So Billy the... Bob uh, was not used in concept unification. He was removed and kept for parts. Looney Bird became the pizza cam. Okay. Oh, so he's just the head. He has no body. In this version. In this version. The, okay. the, the version that came after that was the updated version had the full body and the legs, the, the one with the lap yeah. coat in the back. So uh, Mitzi Mozzarella became Helen Henney. Helen Henney. Peach Bear became Jasper T. Jaws. Munch, uh, Fats became Munch. And Duke became Pasquale. But the weirdest one is Raw. So they chop off his arm and just make it another arm, and he becomes Chuck E. Cheese. Okay. So it's kind of funny on my show, that custom show that I have, where he's talking about he's going to go work for Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. There's an underlying meaning. Oh, in that yeah, you know? I get it. So it was kind of a funny jab that we threw in that, yeah, you know, he's going to go work for Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, he went work for him. He became him. <laughs> and what about the spider? The spider, uh, the airlines for him became the wink. The wink. Yeah, and the then the baby creepy. bear became Munch Jr. Baby bear, Munch Jr. Mm -hmm. Sun became the building and moon stayed. Moon mm -hmm. stayed, yeah. Also, like I mentioned about the concept unification on how Rockefeller characters eventually became Chuck E. Cheese characters, there's only 5 current locations out of the 568 Chuck E. Cheese restaurants that have the original Rockefeller animatronics inside the Chuck E. Cheese costumes. Back then, there used to be around 200, but the rest were eventually replaced by the Studio C Chuck E. Cheese animatronic, which is just only Chucky, while the rest of the gang went to the Toy Story 3 incinerators. Like, come on, how can you not replace these guys? Showbiz Pizza Clown we already talked about this in the Where Did These Images Come From Part 2 video, but since this video is about abandoned animatronics, I just had to mention it. This is a very famous cursed photo of a very creepy clown. In the caption of the photo, it will state that this clown is from a 1983 party. However, this is not a real clown, but instead an animatronic. This creepy clown animatronic was created by Aaron Fector as a mall kiosk greeter slash info booth for an IAAPA convention in 1983 where he greeted visitors, similarly to those fortune teller machines. Not much is known about the show tape he ran off of, but he has about 6 movements. He is dressed in a bright colorful clown outfit and wig, which were designed to showcase Creative Engineering's costuming department. He sits in a booth that slightly resembles a carousel with 4 white bars and a colorful circular top on top of a large colorful wooden platform as the figure has no legs. The animatronic probably has a name, but we just don't know what his name is. There are a handful of photos of this clown, and I think it's safe to say that this is a one of one animatronic since we've only seen one of them so far. Sure, there's a few images of the same clown, but I'm pretty sure that's the same animatronic. From the looks of it, the animatronic has only been used once in an IAAPA convention. Footage of the convention showing the animatronic first surfaced back in 2021, however you only see it in the background, and the animatronic is off. And this is also the only known footage of the animatronic when it was in use. Right now the animatronic sits inside of the creative engineering basement being forgotten in time. Wolfman Zap This is probably one of the most interesting ones in this list, because we're talking about an animatronic that became lost media. You may ask yourself, how can an animatronic become lost media? Well, there's an animatronic named Wolfman Zap, who is the mascot for Zap's Bar and Grill. Unlike Chuck E. Cheese, where a kid can be a kid, Zap's Bar and Grill was more aimed for adults. However, so little information is known about Zap's Bar and Grill because it was very short-lived. No commercials exist, no photos of the inside exist, and hell, there's not even a single photo of the restaurant itself. 
The only evidence of this place ever existing is the bar briefly being mentioned in interviews and articles talking about the early stages of the bar. Luckily, we do have photos of Wolfman Zap himself, but the photos weren't taken inside the restaurant. These photos were most likely taken before the bar opened or even after the bar shut down. For many years, we only had these photos of the animatronic, but then a shocking discovery was made in July of 2015. An Instagram user posted a photo of the Wolfman Zap animatronic attached to the front of a pickup truck driving through a parade. Then on Tumblr, another photo would surface of the same Wolfman Zap animatronic. I have no idea why they decided to use an abandoned animatronic for a parade, but they did. This was a part of the Carson's Valley Days Parade run by the 2030 Club out of Nevada, which kind of explains how Wolfman Zap got there because there was a Zap's bar and grill in Nevada. So it is most likely the same one used from the Nevada location. When you compare the animatronic to a photo of Wolfman Zap with his sunglasses, he doesn't seem to be the same animatronic as they both look different. But if you compare it to this photo of Wolfman Zap, you can see the similarities more clearly. There could have been variants of Wolfman Zap it seems, and it is also estimated that there are only about 5 Wolfman Zap animatronics since there were only 5 bars. How did Wolfman Zap end up in a parade? Who knows? And what happened to the other 4 animatronics? Who knows? Super Mario Goomba In 1993, Hollywood Pictures thought it would have been a great idea to make a live action Super Mario movie. On paper, that sounds like an amazing idea, considering the game was extremely popular at the time. But they missed the mark on the movie because the movie looked bad. Like, come on, Bowser was a human, and the Goombas looked like this. Goombas are meant to have small bodies with a huge head, but in the movie, they had large bodies with very small heads, and they had arms for some weird reason. The costumes for the movie were normal costumes, but the head was actually an animatronic head. It is unknown how many Goomba suits were made for the Mario movie, but right now there's only two in existence, while the others have most likely been destroyed. In 2013, there was a listing selling the infamous Goomba on an auction site. And as you can see, the Goomba animatronic is in horrible shape. I couldn't find the amount it was sold for, but then I found a forum post saying this. Although I'm not the biggest admirer of the Super Mario Bros. movie, I do really dig the props. This is by far the best item I've ever seen come up, a complete hero working animatronic Goomba. Even the fans that were used to cool the actor inside the costume are included. The lot is being auctioned off this Saturday on iCollector with an estimate of $7,000 to $8,000. The current bidding is at $2,100. According to the description, this is only one of two known puppets to have survived. It kind of looks like a crime scene photo now, but can you imagine this assembled on a mannequin standing 8 feet tall? So for 20 years, this animatronic was abandoned up until 2013 when it was sold. I hope it got restored because if not, it would look way worse today since it's been another 10 years since we last saw it on the internet. TMNT. In the 90s, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle trilogy would come out in live action in the form of movies. You may ask yourself, how is this an animatronic? Weren't they just costumes? It is, but similarly to the Goomba that we talked about, the mask has an animatronic part that makes the eyes and mouth move. The costumes wouldn't hold up well since the skin on it was the same material as a Nerf ball, meaning that over time the skin of the costume will eventually rot and deteriorate. Which was true because a few years ago back in 2019, an image would surface of an old Leonardo costume. He looked in bad shape, and the version of the costume was from the third movie. Keep in mind that there were multiple costumes for each turtle. Multiple were made for the sequels and extras were made for the stunt team. As you can see with the zombified Leonardo, his mouth has started to recede. On the back of the helmet, you can see that there's a split and his legs seem to be in bad shape as well. On the prop star website that was selling this costume, had it up for auction, but it didn't sell. In the description, it gave an estimated value of six to $8,000. Since it wasn't sold, it may still be locked up in an auction house somewhere, but that is just speculation since it hasn't been relisted since, and there's no more information on him. Like I've mentioned, there were more costumes made for each turtle since on the same auction site, they were selling a Leonardo costume from the first movie, and this one sold and was in way better condition. There's also another Leonardo costume that was in bad shape with his mouth receding back further, but luckily the company, Tom Spina Designs, restored the costume back to normal. 
Fun fact about this specific costume is that this costume is owned by Kevin Eastman, the co-creator of the Ninja Turtles. There's even a photo of him holding Leo, giving it to the people that are going to restore the costume for him. The caption reads, Kevin Eastman, co-creator of the Ninja Turtles, contacted us about conserving an original Leonardo TMNT movie costume. He had kept the foam prop costume after the filming of the original 1990 movie wrapped. We were thrilled to be helping Kevin out, and also to bring another classic Jim Henson Creature Shop creation back to its former glory. Leo wasn't the only turtle that was abandoned for a while because Raphael was also sold on PropStoreAuction.com. He too had a bit of his skin cracked, but looked way better compared to Leo. On YourProps.com, we can see another listing, but this time it's for a stunt head from the first movie that still includes the animatronic parts. But what's so disturbing is that the same site has another listing of a stunt head, but in the photo they don't have the bandana on, and the image is just cursed. The other co-creator of TMNT, Peter Laird, would post a photo of Donatello to his blog, and by looking at Donnie's face you can see that he's a bit aged up. For some reason this mask is squished, making him look like a grumpy grandpa. The other man in the photo is actually the director and producer of the 2007 animated TMNT movie. So it seems like he was meeting up with Peter and they took a photo of the OG costume together. The blog post also reads, After the first movie was finished and released, the Henson folks generously gave Kevin and me each one of the stunt suits. I believe Kevin got Raphael and I got Donatello. My Donatello suit was, I'm pretty sure, worn by Ernie Reyes Jr. who did most of the Donatello stunts in the first movie. When I got my suit, I put together a jointed wooden skeleton to insert into the suit and allow me to pose it in various positions for display. Well, that was the plan. Anyway, it never really worked that well. The suit is actually pretty heavy and the joints I made couldn't hold it up. So the suit ended up kinda sprawled in a chair in my studio. And that's where it sat more or less for the last 15 years. Finally for the last turtle, Michelangelo. There aren't that many suits that I could find of his besides this one that's in the Smithsonian Museum which I wouldn't consider it to be abandoned since it was in a museum. And I don't know if it's still displayed at the museum anymore. Fun fact, the viral meme of the Michelangelo freakout video is the same Mikey that was displayed in the museum. I did find another Michelangelo helmet, but as you can see it's very destroyed and I don't even think it has its animatronic parts inside of the mask. There are probably more TMNT costumes out there that we do not know about, and there's probably a few that are still locked up and abandoned inside of Hollywood Studio storage facilities. Abandoned Chucky. For this entry, I want to talk about a specific Chuck E. Cheese animatronic that sort of became an internet meme. On June 23rd, 2020, a Reddit user by the name of Taco Skins shared the earliest known version of the image on the r slash pig subreddit. The picture shows a very destroyed Chucky animatronic that was left in a landfill. Following the discovery of the image, numerous individuals began creating humorous edits of the image, turning it into a very popular meme. Later that same year, specifically on September 10th, 2020, a YouTuber known as Freaky Attractions uploaded a video titled, There's a Cursed Animatronic in the Desert, Chuck E. Cheese Creepypasta, which prominently feature the Chuck E. Cheese photo. Within less than a year, the video garnered over 360,000 views. A commenter by the name of CEC Florida responded to the video by stating, I currently own this animatronic. I purchased it for $6,000. It was found in the Mount Olive landfill in Birmingham. For proof, CEC Florida posted more photos onto their Instagram account, and in the following years, they would restore the animatronic back to its old self. CEC Florida is a small channel, and I really wanted to get them on for this video, just so they can tell me their story, similar to Norman. But it seems that CEC Florida quit Instagram, because on their account, they are now private and only have one follower. It seems that they removed all of their followers. Also, I can confirm that this is a real Instagram account and not someone impersonating it. W Bible quote, by the way. Also, on their YouTube channel, their last upload was a month ago, and who knows if they will ever return to social media. But huge shout out to them for restoring a Studio C Chuck E. Cheese animatronic because it is a very fascinating story on how they bought an abandoned animatronic from a popular meme and they restored it. That's a pretty cool story. Every Chuck E. Cheese animatronic. 
In this segment, I am talking about your local Chuck E. Cheese's. In case you didn't know, in 2019, Chuck E. Cheese announced that they are doing a complete remodel. By getting rid of the tickets, tokens, and even the animatronics, many fans were outraged because they are literally removing the thing that got Chuck E. Cheese famous in the first place. Fans were more outraged when they discovered that this 2.0 remodel was going to add a dance floor and TVs showing the Chuck E. Cheese characters in puppet form as a replacement for the animatronics. And oh boy, people were mad. This was announced back in November of 2019, but the pandemic did delay the remodel. Till this day, it is still delayed, but now there's more locations that are finally getting remodeled. Sadly, my local Chuck E. Cheese is getting hits right now. Since last week, I did go to my local Chuck E. Cheese and I saw that they are remodeling it now. And every Chuck E. Cheese decoration and sign that was part of my childhood are now thrown away, which does suck. But luckily, the animatronics are still there, but not for long. It's very sad to see these animatronics go since they were the attraction that put Chuck E. Cheese on the map. And the worst news out of this is that these animatronics cannot be saved. During the remodels, corporate are forcing CEC stores to destroy all of their animatronics and to take a photo of them destroyed and send the photo to corporate for proof. They do this because corporate doesn't want anyone to get their hands on their IP, which makes sense. In case you don't believe me that the Chuck E. Cheese corporate desperately wants these animatronics destroyed, well, they did send an official memo to Chuck E. Cheese locations telling them to destroy the animatronics. There's even video proof of the animatronics being destroyed. Even though they are destroyed, that still doesn't stop collectors from dumpster diving so they can sell them on eBay. On eBay, you can find animatronic parts and even old decor from Chuck E. Cheese since those two were thrown out for the brand new remodel. That may sound depressing that Chuck E. Cheese is throwing every piece of your childhood to the dumpster, but something good did come out of this, and that's because I'm a proud owner of the Air Chuck Ones. That's right, I got the official walk around shoes for the Chuck E. Cheese mascot. I just saw these on eBay and I had to get them for this video. Pretty cool shoes. Now I want to talk about the infamous Northridge location. In Northridge, California, there is one Chuck E. Cheese that stands out a lot from the rest, and that's because this location has not been remodeled since the 80s and is basically a Chuck E. Cheese time capsule. The logo hasn't changed, the animatronics have not changed, and the decor hasn't even changed for decades. Sadly, last month of this year, this Chuck E. Cheese finally started to get remodeled and from the looks of it, they're throwing out all of the rare Chuck E. Cheese antiques they had. However, there is some good news. Since this Chuck E. Cheese location is very iconic, a lot of fans gathered together to voice their strong opinion and they won. The store will get remodeled, but the animatronics are 100% staying and are not leaving anytime soon. So in the near future, this could possibly be the only place where you get to see the animatronics, but who knows? Because there is still a small chance that a few other stores may keep their animatronics, but who knows? Pizza Time Theater the 1970s were a vibrant period for music, video games, and of course the grand opening of Chuck E. Cheese's, which at that time it was known as Chuck E. Cheese Pizza Time Theater. Pizza Time Theater was known for their arcade games, pizza, and of course their live entertainment, which were animatronics. They were also the first ever restaurant to have animatronics. In contrast to the Chuck E. Cheese we know today, Pizza Time Theater had a range of animatronic characters that have since been retired including names like Krusty the Cat, Sally Sachet, Madam Oink, and Foxy Colleen. These characters were known as guest stars, and they weren't a permanent fixture at every location. Instead, they were rotated. While the main Chuck E. Cheese characters were always present, another animatronic would don a different character costume from time to time. This setup encouraged more interactions between the Chuck E. Cheese characters and various other animatronics since there was a constant switch of new characters and costumes. These animatronics received the nickname the portrait stage since these animatronics would be hung up on the wall like a portrait. These portrait stages only lasted from 1977 to 1981. Also talking with Damon, he told me if that the old Chuck E. Cheese ever made a comeback that they would have gotten cancelled because there was some adult jokes that would go over the kid's head. The animatronics would also fashion Madame Oink for being fat, and how can we forget the confederate flag 
swinging from the stages. Chuck E. Cheese was something else in the 70s. So where are these animatronics today? Well, most of them were destroyed slash sold in private auctions to collectors. Two animatronics that I tracked down were these two Chucky and Krusty the Cat animatronics. These photos were taken in the early 2010s and it was owned by Gold Branson and they were located at his home. Now they are in a private collection owned by Travis Schaefer. After asking around, Damon would tell me that these are actually the last two remaining portrait animatronics. Seems like the rest have been lost or even destroyed. Like I've stated, these portrait animatronics only lasted for five years, which were eventually replaced by the balcony stages, which was the second generation of Chuck E. Cheese animatronics. Once they became the balcony stages, Chuck E. Cheese would discontinue the guest stars and only stick with the five main animatronics that you're used to seeing at your local Chuck E. Cheese. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, I was lucky enough to visit Smitty Super Service Station and I got to see some of the few balcony animatronics. Sadly, Helen Henny wasn't plugged in, but I can assure you that she works and the animatronic that replaced her was Madam Oink. I wasn't too familiar who Madam Oink was, but it turns out that she is the only working Madam Oink animatronic out there, so in a way, she's one of one. And getting to see her perform is incredibly rare. So back then, Chuck E. Cheese was called Pizza Time Theater, right? All right. Pizza Time Theater. Pizza You'll see, time you can theater. see it on the bottom of the sign over here. Pizza Time Theater. Mm -hmm. And originally, they were only half bodies. Most yeah. people will come and see that there are no feet, and they get really confused. So from a kid's standpoint, looking up, they would have been about six feet up. So you would not have been able to have told as a kid looking that they didn't have feet. It would have looked like they were standing up there. Okay. To you. So this would have been tall enough for a kid to have walked through. Oh, so not so, a crawl, just walk. Right. It, 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 that, a kid, a little, a little three foot tall kid could have easily walked through it. Okay, that's cool. So, I don't have the uh, 12 foot height. The 12 foot height, yeah. <laughs> Also, I have one more question. So, with these uh, animatronics, these or like these were not the first I could check the cheese ones because the first ones were the portrait ones. Portraits. Were these the second ones? This this would be considered the second generation. Second one yeah. generation. Yeah, that's cool. You know how in Pizza Time Theater, uh, like they are, they swapped a few characters time to time, like Madame Moink, right? Yeah, Madame Moink did. Also, there's, uh, also had a guest character Helen Hennig there that was the chicken. Uh, they had Harmony Hallowet, which was the coyote. Um, they had Foxy Colleen, that was obvious. Mm -hmm. And there was one other character that was a skunk, and her name, you'll have to look that one up, the skunk. The, the disco skunk. skunk was the other guest character. So Helen Heaney, by whatever form of luck you want to look at it, was the last character when the company went bankrupt, and that's why she became okay. the permanent, because the company went out of business. And that was just the last one that they had at that point. So. Also, something interesting for the video is that uh, apparently Madame Point, she's like very rare to see her perform, correct? Right. We only have a couple of her costumes and, and, and cosmetics that are still in the collection of the fandom. And, how and many mine performs? is the only one that's actually on a robot to run. So. Okay, so this is the only working one. Right? The only working one wow. right now. More rare than a Drake concert. <laughs> <laughs> we like reuse that joke every time. I know, bro. So, so if if you do want to step back, I can show you Helen Henny if you want oh, to yeah, have her. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, I took out the shoes. Change. So here is Miss Helen Henny, who was the the last guest character who became the permanent character by oh, default. Yeah, she looks wow. way different from the one that I'm used to seeing. So the one you're used to seeing is the one back here, which was the one that was more of the cheerleader. Yeah. So that's that's the one that you're more familiar with, I'm sure. And from like all the nicknames, this was Avenger, right? Avenger, hell. Avenger. But she kept the same name. To me, she became more of a duck. Because I see of, that. Because of the bill. So if you look at, at Miss Helen, at Helen Heaney's bill, it's, it's very chicken-esque yeah that, beak. that looks like a duck this looks more like a duck peel so they just totally redesigned the character that's kind of like when they went from avenger to rockstar on chuck e cheese too yeah. so they really changed his character as well and that is the end of abandoned animatronics 
Where are they now? Huge shout out to Damon from Smitty Super Service Station for inviting Tub and I to go make a video on his place. And make sure to subscribe to his YouTube channel because he will be posting more. Also, Fazbear Earl did drop on EarlDoesExist.com, so go use my link in the description to go buy one now because they are going to sell quick. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and thank you so much for making it till the end of this video, so make sure to like and subscribe if you guys would like, but other than that, I'll see you guys in my next video. See you guys!